Good stuff. Good job, Noah. All right, Will, you're up next in the hot seat. All right, JD, you got it for five minutes, man. All right. Um, so I guess I'll start off with some uh, compliments. I do think it is sad that the church is divided over baptism, but I think you're making it more divisive. <laughs> so let me ask you this. So you're calling yourself the dispensational view. I, I just feel like for John MacArthur's sake, I have to like defend his name a little bit. Um, this seems like a radical dispensationalist view um, that is not associated with regular dispensational uh, Baptists. Um, let me ask you this. Is there anybody else that holds to this view other than yourself? Yes. Is it your wife? I'm, I'm joking. But seriously, uh, where can I find this view outside of the Duffy family? Uh, many churches across the country, uh, the Grace Gospel Fellowship, the Berean Bible Fellowship, it's pretty widespread. Okay. And so it sounds like to me this view is suggesting um, – that there is no more Christian baptism. Is that right? Christian baptism uh, no. is over. And Well, okay. Water baptism is not, is over. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Water baptism is not necessary as members of the body of Christ. It's not necessary. Is it commanded for, when you say, I'm curious about what you mean by necessary. Are Christians expected to be baptized by water? No. <clears throat> They are not. So there, yep. as a Christian, there is no sense that God is telling me that I should be baptized no. by water. Okay. That's correct. So in the Great Commission, it sounds like you conceded that the 12 apostles understood, 11 at that time, understood when he said to go baptize the nations that they were supposed to apply water as demonstrated in the book of Acts. Is that is that correct? That's right. Okay. So why would Jesus say that I'm going to be with you, right, to go make disciples of all nations. And, and you can go into the Old Testament. I mean, the, the promise of Abraham, he's going to bless all the nations, right? Jesus Christ is going to have the fullness of his rewards because even us, we're all Gentiles here. We are the fulfillment of that command. So they're supposed to go out and uh, baptize the nations. They're supposed to disciple them and teach them all that God has commanded. And he says, lo, I will be with you to the end of the age. Okay. But you're saying that the baptism part is not to the end of the age. I'm trying to figure out how you're disconnecting Christ's promise that I will empower you to do the Great Commission to the end of the age, and yet actually to baptize them is not to the end of the age. Sure. So uh, Acts 1, they ask Christ if he's going to restore the kingdom to Israel. The day of Pentecost is one of the most Jewish days there is. So what I'm stating is that those people who were saved early on in the book of Acts were saved into Israel, and that the body of Christ, the church today, did not start until Acts 9. Okay, so when the Bible says that if you believe in Jesus Christ, then you are now a son of God. You are now a child of God, right? That you're now part of the church. I mean, they, it even says that as many as received him, believed in his name, were added 3,000 souls that day. So you're saying that Christian Jews who didn't believe in Jesus are converted to Jesus, believe in Jesus, just like me and you, but they're not actually in the body of Christ? And yeah, the body of Christ didn't exist yet. So you have a Christian group believing in the same gospel that we believe, but there's no body of Christ because there's no Paul? It's not, it's not an identical gospel. So... Acts 2.38, Peter said, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That's not the gospel for today. Okay, but there are several other places in Acts where we see the same expression that says to believe in Jesus for the remission of sins. Uh, and this is actually the only place where we even see that. And we can talk about, we probably don't have time, of course, to talk about what that expression means. But so in those other places where Peter is preaching the gospel that doesn't mention baptism, is he preaching the new gospel or the old one? And he just forgets to mention baptism. I don't, I don't know which specific time you're, you're speaking about, but part of believing in Christ, JD, is believing what Christ said you must do to be saved. And in the Great Commission, he says, he who believes and is baptized, future tense, will be saved. Okay. 
there, I'm sure you know that that is a dubious text that has serious question about its authenticity. But then the next phrase says, and who he who does not believe is condemned. But real quick here, so Jesus commands us to be baptized, okay? We, you, you seem to agree with that in the Great Commission. He commands Christians to be baptized. There is no command not to to undo that command. So why should we listen to you instead of Jesus Christ? We should listen. We should listen to Paul, who received his gospel directly from Jesus Christ, and explicitly said he was not under the Great Commission. Okay, thank you. All right, Greg, you're up to cross examine Will. <clears throat> Will, I appreciate your uh, attention to the text of the Bible. Thank you for that. Um, I think your view is pretty crazy like seriously like out of line with the whole church from history uh but let me deal with you on the text okay so when paul says in first corinthians twelve thirteen that you're baptized by the spirit into the body of christ do you think that doesn't mean baptism in water do you think that doesn't mean the right of baptism that's correct. Yeah, I mentioned that in my opening statement. We have many different types of baptism in the Bible. And 1 Corinthians 12, 13 is the textbook uh, proof text for Holy Spirit baptism. Okay, so I agree that there are many different baptisms in the Bible. I've made this point in debates and such. Are you saying that when Paul says in, say, Ephesians 4, uh, there's one baptism, he's not referring to anything about the rite of baptism. Uh, he's not referring to anything concerning water baptism. Um, are, are you okay. familiar with chiasm? Okay, so, well, so in, in Acts 19, when he saw 12 men that, you know, were the foundation church for Ephesus, and he said, did you receive this, and so forth, the Spirit, uh, were you, and then you, you re-baptized them. So do you think that was not in water? That text uh, is not clear if it's spirit or water. Uh, I could go either way. Uh, they were Jews, and so baptizing them in water would go along with their dispensation. So in Colossians 2, do you think that when he says baptism uh, in relation to circumcision, he does not mean the water event? Nope. Yeah, he's referring to Holy Spirit baptism, the same one baptism of Ephesians 4. And in Romans 6, when Paul says that through baptism you are united to Christ, that's not water event. That's not a, an event that includes water. Nope, that's spirit baptism. All right. In 1 Peter 4, or th sorry, 3, does Peter mean that the parallel between Noah's flood and the ark and baptism now saves you, that he does not refer to water at all. And the, that is and, absolutely that is absolutely water baptism there. Okay, so Peter says baptism saves you, and that's a water event for the believers in those churches. Yes, remember, First Peter is written specifically to Israel, the, the diaspora, the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Okay, so I could go on on all the texts on baptism, but let me just ask, like, what are you saying? Are you saying, like, no one in the Christian church today should be baptized? Is that what you're saying? Um, I, I don't believe that they should be water baptized. But uh, being baptized by the Spirit into the body of Christ is what happens upon salvation. Okay, so you deny the Nicene Creed. There's one baptism for remission of sins. Uh, my position is strictly biblical. I, I don't go to extra biblical sources for my theology. I, I've been referring to the Bible this whole time. But let me just ask again. So you're saying that a person who comes to faith in Jesus should not undergo water baptism yes or no that's correct so, okay all right so 
um, you deny essentially the whole of the Christian church's history on this. We, we, I think everyone else would say, we, you know, we're working it out. You know, what's theology? You're, you're saying, don't do it. How about communion? Should, should we eat bread and drink wine in the presence of God on the Lord's day? Yes or no? Yes. Why? Uh, because that's, uh, that, that's for everyone. Is it commanded? Well, I didn't is, say that you must. Bab- I didn't say that you must do it. Is baptism commanded? I would baptism think it was, is. Baptism was not commanded once by Paul, who wrote half of the New Testament, and it is commanded to Israel. So Paul right. is the Bible. I All got right. it. Yeah, that's time Paul. right there. All right, Sawyer, you got it for five minutes. Uh, brief question first. Uh, Will, do you believe that those who submit to baptism uh, are committing some sort of sin by seeking signs from outdated dispensations or anything? Not at all. Okay. Uh, so, is, I mean, is that, is that something that you would uh, you would do? Like, would you be baptized or have you? I mean, I guess you were a Lutheran, so you probably were at some point. Um, um, so I was, never, I was yeah. baptized in the Lutheran church. Uh, my wife and kids have not been baptized ever, and I attended a uh, water baptism full immersion last Sunday. At, at your church, I'm assuming? Or... Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, I wasn't sure if it was someone else. It seems someone that you knew. Uh, so the next question, um, kind of bouncing off what JD said, uh, did Jesus' Great Commission have an end in sight either in duration or in scope? Um, Not at the time, but uh, things changed when it was clear that Israel was overwhelmingly rejecting their Messiah. Okay. Why did none of the biblical writers make it explicit that baptism ended, so to speak, that the requirement of baptism ended? Uh, I think it is explicit. Okay, how so? How how would you defend that? Sure, a whole whole bunch of uh, reasons. So again, back to Cornelius, we we see a dispensational change there with Gentiles. Paul is raised up as the apostle to the Gentiles, and everything he wrote uh, never once says that we should be baptized. If you take your interpretation that baptism is not water baptism in the Pauline letters, of course. No, uh, so no. why? So, so well, really quick, if, Sawyer, it's greater than okay, that. Okay, sure. If you look at every time Paul mentions baptism, it's it's passive. It's we were baptized into Christ. Right. I mean, he never every says, time he never says that. go go be baptized. You should be baptized, etc. I mean, virtually every time that baptism is mentioned, it is passive anyway. Uh, but it does help when you're talking to baptized believers in your epistle uh, to not have to, you know, render that command to be baptized. Uh, so why was the Philippian jailer baptized? Why, why do we have baptisms occurring after Acts 10 if they didn't see it as necessary? If Paul didn't see it as necessary, why, why him? Why, why Lydia? Why the Ephesian disciples? Sure. Um, So Paul makes it clear that he did not baptize very many people. Um, In 1 Corinthians 1, he says that, you know, he he essentially says, I only baptized a handful of people. He thanks God that he did not baptize more, says that Christ did not send him to baptize. And so the handful of examples we have of Paul baptizing, I believe, are because Paul was a Jew. and, and, and mikvah was something he was very familiar with. And this is something that, you know, people were familiar with. I, I think a majority of the people that Paul baptized were Jews. Okay. Uh, if the, you brought up earlier as well about the church uh, not being the body of Christ. Um, is that, that's correct, right? Uh, that the, sorry, not, not that the church is not the body of Christ, but that uh, the body of Christ and the church did not exist before Acts 9, right? 
Yeah, what I said was is that the body of Christ and Israel are separate, distinct bodies, and that the body of Christ started in Acts 9 with Paul. Okay. So if the church, uh, if the body of Christ started in Acts 9 uh, or Acts 10 with Paul, uh, how do you reconcile the use of the word church to describe the earliest Jewish congregation with Paul's equivocation with the church or of the church with the body of Christ in Ephesians 1 23, 5 23, uh, Colossians 1 18, uh, like those passages? A church, an ecclesia is just a body of believers. So I guess right. I don't see an issue there. I think it's, if, I think it's Acts 7 8 that refers to. Uh, Israel in the Old Testament as a church. But we are talking about a New Testament use of the term. And I, I mean, I'm not trying to go off of that, that exclusively, uh, but there was this technical use of the term uh, to describe the earliest Christian congregations, the ecclesia. Correct? Sure. Yeah, that, that term can be used for different bodies. Not a problem. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Noah, you're up for your five minute cross emanation of Will. Okay. First, Will, I'd like to apologize for the tone I took uh, at the end of the last thing I said. That was, I was talking quickly, and, and I, I apologize for that because uh, you've been extraordinarily kind and cheery this whole time. So I just wanted to say that real quick. Um, but. I, I also uh, may have to ask forgiveness for the questions I have to ask because they're very, very important ones given what I think is the uh, result of your position. I want you to know I have nothing against you. You sound, you seem super great and I'd love to hang out sometime, but I, I think your uh, your position is unbiblical and un-Catholic. Um, so when you were asked about the Council of Nicaea, you said you do not follow, uh, or correct me if I'm wrong here, you don't follow men. So do you deny the statement of the Council of Nicaea, given that they would have understood that as water baptism? Which statement? Uh, I have it right here. I was actually going to ask it before Greg did. Um, <clears throat> uh, one sec. One baptism for the remission of sins. That would have referred to and, water baptism. And how, how do you know that refers to water baptism? Uh, St. Ambrose of Milan would have interpreted it that way. Uh, if you want to, we can. If you want to, we can walk through St. Athanasius. Um, if you could point me to one saint in the early church who would have taken your interpretation of that council or of these scriptures, I'd love to hear it. I think that's an appeal to authority, and I just have to say yes, that so I do yes. believe I do believe my position is biblically consistent. Right. So, how do you interpret scripture? Uh, how does how, how does anyone know whether their opinion of scripture is correct or not? Uh, careful study, prayer, mm -hmm. hermeneutics. So is your church the true church? Which church? Uh, what, what church do you attend? I attend two uh, churches. I, okay. So, so your, your group is not like a unified, unified body per se. I actually attend a Baptist church half the year and I attend a non-denominational Bible church, the other half. Okay. Fair, fair. I, I didn't know what, how, how it all worked out within the dispensational thing. Um, so you talked about, Jesus said one thing about baptism and then that Paul had, had said, no, we're, we're doing the spirit baptism. Did Jesus know that there would be that shift or was he surprised by it? Jesus gave it to Paul. He directed oh, he it. Okay. He guided it. He created it. Okay, fair. Um, so, so why would Jesus direct Paul to say something different than what he had said before? If, if I'm understanding your position correctly. Sure. Um, the parable of the fig tree, uh, which I believe referred to Israel, gave Israel one year after Christ's ascension to repent. And at the, stone, at the stoning of Stephen, we see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. It's the only time in the Bible he's seen standing. And they're killing uh, a, a believer in Jesus. And I believe that he stood in judgment and decided to cut off Israel, start a new body, and started that body with Paul. Okay. Does the Holy Spirit guide the body of believers that we call the church? Yes. Okay. 
Um, so when he guided that body of believers for 1500 years, why did your position not come up? Why, why did the Holy Spirit not permit these great men of God uh, who defend the Trinity and the knowledge and wisdom of God and the foreknowledge of God? Why did he not give these great men uh, the truth of what the biblical doctrine of baptism is? Uh, it's, a, it's an assumption that you're making. Mm -hmm. uh, it is. And I, I, I can't, I, I can't tell you that, you know, we know exhaustively what everybody believed and that nobody believed this. Well, may, may, okay. If the church came together at a council, but there was one man on the fringe who believed some, uh, let's say something like absurd, like Jesus was actually a, uh, a small animal, like something way off base. Are we going to listen to him or are we going to listen to an ecumenical council? With the church guided by the holy spirit i don't take councils uh that are uh outside of the bible as authoritative in any way shape or form and i do find mm -hmm. it interesting that the, that, the, that the church today as a whole doesn't even properly deal with the actual biblical council the jerusalem council in acts 15. Mm -hmm. okay so you do not affirm Nicaea in its entirety, yes or no? Correct. Yeah, that's not scripture. Okay. Fair all right, enough. all right. All right, good stuff, guys. All right, next up in the hot seat.